1963. Mm-hmm. It's a period that uh, is almost mythical, in, um, especially today. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking back and looking at the show, it looks like a completely different city. Um, mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the resources that you drew on to kind of learn about that era? Because you were just a, you were a little itty bitty baby at yeah. the time. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, we started looking at doing research on the history of the time and the place, you know. With Bumpy Johnson, I, I actually, you know, his wife had written an autobiography, uh, you know, uh, Mamie. And then there was like a, some poetry, some stuff like uh, prison, rec- prison records and stuff that he had written. I, that we, I was able to look at. I was able to meet with like uh, some of the guys in Harlem that knew him or worked with him as mobsters. We were like Chisholm and uh, June Berg, uh, no, uh, June Buck. And, um, just sort of put all that together with like the face of the time, the politics of the time, the music of the day, and he started to come alive for me. Mm. Uh, music, uh, especially, is such a big part of uh, mm. the show and the era. Um, you, do you did you have any like favorites that you wanted to see that you were like, uh, can't you think you could get this song, or was that someone else's department and you were just kind of hoping for the best? No, no. I mean, as a producer, I was dealing with the music from the very beginning. Actually, when we first uh, approached uh, Swiss Beats. To be able to do the soundtrack, you know, and the soundtrack was really important because it placed, I think, people in a in a space uh, where they can recognize the contemporary parallels and stuff. Because mm-hmm. there was original songs, like maybe fourteen or so original songs written for the show. Every week, there's like two new songs that are reflecting like the day, and they were written specifically for the show. So they kind of they kind of allowed us to to live in today as a mirror of yesterday. Mm. It's beautiful. Um, when you're, you're playing this character who's based on you, you mentioned the, you know, all the research that you did to get into mm-hmm. character, but you're still crafting your version of this character. Mm-hmm. Do you ever come up across uh, lines that you want to or don't want to cross where you go, I want to be authentic, but I want to be able to put my own spin on it? How do you handle that um, conundrum? Well, I don't think it hasn't been as big a conundrum only because, like with, with, with uh, he was like a quiet um, mobster. Mm-hmm. Uh, crime Lord. I mean, he didn't. There's very few photographs. So I think we found like maybe five photographs of him. You know, no video, no interviews, nothing. So in that respect, uh, I'm looking at his pictures and I'm like studying the, what people said about him and and then constructing them from there. So there's a lot of, you know, uh, room. I've, there's been other characters I've played where people are more familiar with the, their behavior. I think the thing that might be confusing for people or be different than people think is I'd like play him more like a businessman. Mm-hmm. I play him like more like a, a banker, you know, and not as much like this loud, rambunctious, you know, m- mobster, you know. So I think that's something that I found through reading, this, you know, a little bit of poetry and through looking at um, the things that were written about him, the things, the letters that he wrote actually where he talked about being a businessman. Yeah, the, these figures are so complicated because on one hand they're you know gangsters. You're invoking you know the Godfather just in the title, but um, you know they're also people. They're they're leaders. They're they can be positive role models. Hmm. Is that um, a challenge or is that the goal? I think the complexity of it is is, is part of the goal and the challenge. Hmm. You know, I think want to show like. What are the options that were available for him to be able to excel and rise up in society? He found a way through the only hole that he could see, which is the criminal world, you know? And the question is, once you've made that choice, if you're doing destructive things to the community, what does it mean? And what is your responsibility to the community if you do those types of things? And I think those, those questions sort of come arise as we should the show.